So how did Sudan get brought into the fold? Because not too long ago, it was a safe haven for terrorists like Al-Qaeda. It's a remarkable story. You, you know, the foreign policy establishment says that you can't have any type of peace deal without the Palestinians. But President Trump threw out the diplomatic rule book. He said to the Palestinians, look, you can deal or we're going to move on without you. And he found that other Arab states shared our, you know, basically discussed with the Palestinians that they refused to negotiate. They're pounding around with terrorists and they wanted peace with Israel because they see Iran as a major threat. Now, there were two previous deals with UAE and Bahrain. They were basically low hanging fruit. They were easy to get. The Sudan deal was really quite an achievement. This country has an interim government. It overthrew a dictator last year. It has a terrible economy. Uh, terrorist groups are threatening its stability. But they gambled on peace with Israel because they realized that's in their interest, not sticking to the decades old uh, mantra of the Arab radicals that Israel is the enemy. Iran is the enemy and Israel is now their friend. And some of the concessions we saw with Sudan, I believe, was putting up over $335 million toward uh, the U.S. victims of terrorism. And in response to the U.S., we pulled them off the terror list. So can you speak to that swap a little bit? Well, you know, what makes this agreement even more uh, uh, unbelievable is that just a few weeks ago, Sudan was still on the U.S. state-sponsored terrorism list because of its role in bombing the Tenya, uh, Kenya and Tanzania embassies in the 90s, as well as the USS Cole in 2000. Well, they agreed to pay compensation. They apologized for that. We took them off the list. Uh, it, this was a huge development that the previous uh, government, which was an, a, a radical Islamist government that was basically engaged in genocide in the country, with him out, the country, I, I hope, will have a bright future. And this is very historic because I believe it was 1967, there was a Khartoum agreement signed there between several states in the region saying that they would never have peace with Israel. It was a Jewish state, so therefore they wanted to have nothing to do with it. So can you speak to some of the historic precedents here of the Abraham Accords bringing together Muslims, Jews, and Christians? Well, after the Six Day War in 1967, the Arab League got together in Khartoum and signed an agreement where they all agreed not to recognize or to deal with Israel. So Khartoum is the capital of Sudan. For Sudan to renounce that agreement, which was the basis, the foundation of, of Arab hatred and rejection of Israel, was huge. The agreements are called the Abraham Accords because these are all Abrahamic religions, Christianity, Judaism. Islam all share the 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 the, 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 the um, basis the for coming from Abraham in in the Bible and it is a, a unifying theme to try to get the peoples of these three religions to move in together. The United States is Christian, Israel is Jewish, and then the Arab states is Islamic. And over these past four years of President Trump's presidency, the mainstream media has assured us that the Arab world hates the president because the president is an Islamophobe. However, what we see here is that the Trump administration has actually made many inroads with the Arab world. If you could speak to that as well. Well, the fact is that not only does President Trump have a great relationship with Israel, maybe one of the best of any president, he's a strong relationship with the Arab world. One of his first trips abroad was to Saudi Arabia when he had a, a summit with the heads of most Arab states. And by getting out of the Iran deal and other, other things he's done, he has established their trust. This trust has allowed Trump to move forward with Israel and with Arab states to advance the peace process. It, it's been a remarkable series of diplomatic successes. And what would be the significance if Saudi Arabia was to make an agreement with Israel as the president hopes is possible here in the near future? It would be the most significant agreement uh, of getting Israel and, and Saudi Arabia to have an agreement. I personally don't think that agreement is as close as the president is, but I didn't think the Sudan agreement was close. So who knows? There's so many things going on in the background that Trump officials are going. And I, you know what really worries me, Kara, that if Joe Biden gets into office, he's going to rejoin the Iran deal and all this progress could be lost. There's a lot at stake in this election. 